Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. Welcome to Tuesday. Is it Tuesday for you? It's Tuesday for us. All okay. right, we're so glad you're here. <laughs> Today we are helping you learn a little something about holidays that happen between like early December and like January 1st. Yeah. It's the holiday season. Yep. They and call it we that because there's this. a lot of holidays. Right. There's more than just like two. And we talked about this a little bit in the last episode where we were talking about like different fates have different holidays and now we're sharing what those holidays are, and some of them are related to faith, some of them less so, but you know, it's all learning. We're and this learning is today. not an exhaustive list. No, there's a ton. But there's speaking ton. of lists, yeah, she's at the top of my nice list and oh. my naughty list. It's Ayo. Caitlin. <laughs> Some kids in the car with their parent going, wait, and the naughty list? How does that even work? Yeah. And the parents are like, shh, eat your snack. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's Jenny. She's my sneaky, persistent ice sculptor. Okay, I what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That one is stupid, but it's related to the winter holidays, so I had to yes, share it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about these winter holidays. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to start, we, we're going to start with St. Nicholas Day. That just and happened. It did? It did. No, it didn't. Not yet. Uh, this episode will play later. So we're talking like we're in the future. Yeah, but this episode will air on December 5th and St. Nicholas Day is December 6th. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that in there. Okay. So St. Nicholas Day celebrates... <laughs> St. Nicholas, obviously, right? Um, he's St. Nicholas of Myra, the man whose life inspired the tradition of Santa Claus and Father Christmas. And right now I'm playing the scene in my head from the Santa Claus when he's in jail and he's like, name? And he goes, Chris Kringle. Yes, 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 yes. Name? Santa Claus. Name? Babo Natale. Babo Gijo. <laughs> That's my favorite scene in the whole movie. It's perfect. That is a perfect Christmas movie. Anyway, he Almost gave all of his... as good as Santa Claus 2. No, well, all right. I don't hate Santa I Claus I will tell too. you, and I have said this on every Christmas episode we've had, that scene where he goes to the school party and gives oh, all the teachers the presents they wanted as kids. It's so I beautiful. I am sobbing. It's so beautiful. This I is love toss it. toss across. Yeah, yeah, they had the, oh, it's so good. I have chills when you talked about it. It's such a good episode. Yeah. Or so, not episode. Also, it does have episodes. There's a, there's a, the Santa Claus Oh, the new series. ones are out. Yeah, they're out. Okay. Anyway, Santa Claus was inspired by St. Nicholas. We're back. We're back on track. Okay, oh, so St. Nick gave all of his money to the needy and was known for being compassionate for, to children. Uh, let's see. The holiday honors the man on the anniversary of his death, which was December 6th. 343 Anno Domini, not after death, hmm. Anno Domini AD. Okay. Um, so lots of people celebrate with parades and feasts. They give gifts. There's festivals. Kids will leave letters for St. Nick. Um, they'll leave carrots and grass for his donkey or his horse, which I thought was really sweet. And in the morning, they'll find little presents under their pillows or in their shoes and stockings. Sound familiar? Mm. Yeah. Or on plates they've set out for him. Um, oranges and chocolate coins are common treats. Those are given out on St. Nicholas Day as well. And that's December 6th, which is tomorrow. Let me make sure of that before I just make up some stuff. But I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah, December 5th is too. Today's December 5th. No? You're right. <laughs> I knew I was. 
We just had St. Nicholas Day. We'll leave that in too. You guys. It's hard you guys, when you're trying to live in the future. It's really hard. I also numbers. Okay. I was a math teacher. Right. I'm shutting up now. Your turn. Okay. You do one. So um, <laughs> the next one I'm going to talk about is Hanukkah. And um, this most uh, Americans are familiar with somewhat. Um, it's an eight, uh, eight day long Jewish celebration uh, of the dedication of the second temple in Jerusalem. Um, this is not Jewish Christmas. And in fact, it's not even a major Jewish holiday. Um, the high holy days happened earlier in the year. Um, there's mm. the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, and there's Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. Um, but this is a really uh, fun celebration that after um, the Maccabean Revolt and uh, the Greeks were defeated, the Jews got their temple back and it had been defiled. And so they worked and they cleaned and they lit the menorah. And the menorah uh, we're familiar with um, normally has six candles with one helper candle in the center. So that's seven. Okay. Okay. A Hanukkah is a special type of menorah that actually has eight daily candles and a helper candle. So it has nine. Oh, I didn't know there was a difference. Yes. And so this is a cool. special menorah that's just used during Hanukkah. Um, the Shamas is the name of the helper candle. And so it's lit it. each night and used to light the candles in the order that they have been lit each night. So first you do the first night, then the second night, you'll do the first and the second night, then the second and the third. Yes. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Um, there's specific blessings that are said um, each night. There's a special one that kicks off Hanukkah and then each night um, the blessings are re uh, repeated. There's all kinds of special foods, but most of them are fried in oil to celebrate the amount of oil that was able to burn in the menorah when they cleaned up and rededicated the temple they had enough Sounds to only great. burn a few nights and actually the miracle was it lasted for eight nights so there's all kinds of oily greasy foods like latkes yes. potato pancakes or um sufkan yot, which is uh jelly filled donuts um it's the best food holiday for sure oh, yum and awesome yeah. That's so cool. I didn't know that there were two different ones. This is this is amazing. Yeah. So when you see a, a menorah that has six candles and one helper or seven candles, that's the typical. Hmm. I wonder if the reason it got so like viewed as like Jewish Christmas is because Christians had no idea how to right. explain it. So they, oh, <laughs> so they yeah. were just like, and it's marketing, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Companies realized that there was a large portion of the population that was not buying Christmas presents. But hey, if we really play up the idea of Hanukkah and eight nights of gift giving, it goes from small little trinkets to major gifts. Yeah. That's good money. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of Jewish families, um, Hanukkah is a chance for rededication. This is a chance to spend some time together and be and have quality time. The candles are designed to burn for about 30 minutes. And during that time, a lot of families will turn off all their devices and mm. their, even maybe the lights in their home and just enjoy each other's company by the light of the candles. I love that. Yeah. So that's how we that's honor it. Um, you know, we have Jewish heritage in our family. And so mm -hmm. um, while we don't want to like play Jewish, we honor Hanukkah by lighting the candles and spending some time together each night for the eight nights of Hanukkah in the quiet with each other. I love that. That's so nice that and you guys do that. And yeah, they're, yeah, they're, you got to make sure you throw that in there too. That's that's special. How fun. Um, okay, so the next one. Actually, I, I should say this because now I really do know where I am in the calendar. And so we are currently in Hanukkah right now. Yes. yes. So happy Hanukkah, everyone. Happy yeah. Hanukkah. There we go. Okay, so the next one is the winter solstice. And this is on December 21st typically right but it's sometimes it's like the 22nd and sometimes it's the 20th it kind of just depends on you know the position of the world yes there you go so it is the shortest day of the year and we don't mean like hours we mean like amount of daylight right it's the shortest amount of daylight so people all over the world participate in this one with festivals and celebrations um 
uh, many years ago, people would celebrate by lighting bonfires and candles to try and bring the sun sort of back, right? Um, in Canada, to honor all of these different cultural traditions that celebrate the winter solstice, the Vancouver Street Lantern Society created the city's Solstice Lantern Festival, and they can uh, they offer workshops for people to go and create their own lanterns and then on the night of the solstice processions are all marching there's a bunch of people marching throughout the city with fire performances and oh this is cool the attendees can also try to find their way through the labyrinth of light which is a maze of 600 candles that invites visitors to let go of old thoughts and find new possibilities for the coming year and this is a fun one, too. In Japan, a hot bath with yuzu citrus fruits is believed to refresh the body and spirit. I mean, yeah. How right? does that not? Right? Ward off illness and soothe dry winter skin because we all know that's a challenge all over the place. And, um, <laughs> of course, this is here. But apparently, some <laughs> rodents. This is how you know Jenny helped me write this notes. And by help me, I mean she did it all. Um rodents called capybaras love yuzu baths capybaras are like if you don't know what that is it's like a giant hamster it is a giant is it hamster like. or a giant guinea pig it's they have a guinea pig face they're huge and they're supposed to be really sweet i guess um but they're but like they, the size of german shepherds yeah they're so big <laughs> they are rodents of unusual size Right. They're massive. But um, they love those baths. And so some Japanese zoos will throw fruit into warm water for um, capybaras to soak in <laughs> because they love it on the winter solstice. Like, how funny is that? I love it. So um, another holiday that uh, that is part of the celebration of solstice is called Yule. And so this like is like the Yule log. The Yule log. Exactly. <gasps> and so yes. um, this is looking kind of because not only is it the shortest day of the year, it's also the longest night of the year. Yes. And so yes, a lot of is. cultures will have a longest night service for people who have lost a loved one that year. Oh, that's a nice way to look at that. Yeah. I, I view that. Now, that's cool. I have a friend who was born on December 21st and he says it was the shortest day of the year. Unless you ask my mom. Uh, oh, <laughs> Poor so baby. back to Yule. Um, Yule is one of the uh, oldest recorded winter holidays in all of history. Wow. It comes from the rebirth of the sun, much uh, like the solstice honoring the sun, bringing it mm -hmm. back. Come on. Um, but Yule has also been called Christmas tide or Yule tide. And it was oh. celebrated by putting a large oak tree in the fireplace. The tree would get cut down and then you slowly push it into the flames over the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, wow. How cool. Now. Oh, wait. Yule log. Yule That's log. the Yule log. So the Yule log tradition has actually changed over time because we don't have to use fires to keep us warm for 12 days leading up to Christmas. <laughs> so now the modern tradition of a Yule log is burning last year's Christmas tree. Oh. So if you if you have a fresh tree... You cut off the trunk and you save it. And then next Christmas oh. or next Yule, you'll burn you the Yule log. Yeah. Oh. But this is, um, again, a very ancient holiday. It comes from pagan tradition. So there was an exchange of nature-themed gifts, making wreaths out of mm -hmm. evergreen. Do you mm -hmm. see a connection here? Mm -hmm. Sure do. There's a sure history do. involving celebrating the birth of Jesus at the same time as other holidays. Uh-huh. Yeah. So there you go. It's how you bring the pagans in. Right. I, first, I have to say this. Do you remember when uh, we were kids and there was a commercial that was like... First of all, I'm thinking of the Yule log like the dessert. Like there's that rolled oh, cake yes. dessert. That looks like a, Noel. Like a, like a yeah, like a giant like hostess roll yeah. thing. That's what I have in my head, right? But now I can't stop picturing. There was some commercial, and I can't remember what the dessert was, but I always felt like it was like the height of sophistication where it was some like cake cutter thing, and they would cut this like frozen ice cream fudge oh, looking with layered the layers. thing. It started with a V. Vianetta? Yeah. Is that it? Mm, something like that. It Oh, it was, but it was a commercial. And I just remember thinking like they would put it like in a, it looked like a champagne, like like shallow yes, glass kind of thing. But it came but, in like a foil tin, like a Sara Lee pound cake. Did it? I thought it was in the freezer. I thought it was no, like no, a freezer yes, tree. No, it is from the freezer. It is from the... Oh. Sara Lee pound cake comes from the freezer. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. 
Well, I'm just, I can't stop picturing like, I am looking up the name or hostess thing. Yeah. I'm looking up the name. Yeah. Okay. So while you do that, I will explain this one and I'm probably going to, am I saying this one? Is it Soyal? Okay. I think so. So It is Vianetta. Oh, good job. Okay. We'll put a picture of it. Blast from the past. Yeah. You'll, (laughs) if, (laughs) if you're almost 40 or if you're counting down your 40 days of 40, like Jenny is, then you, you probably know what I'm talking about and you're probably picturing the box. It was like a green box. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, um, this one, Soyal, is December 22nd. So the Zunai or Zuni and Hopi Native American tribes in the southern U.S. honor the winter solstice on Tuesday, December 22nd. Now, is Tuesday actually December 22nd this year? I don't know. Is it? No, I don't think it is. Oh, no. Sorry. It's Friday, December 22nd. Okay, guys, so this is a challenge. This is a chance for me <laughs> to bring up that I put together this list years ago. I was teaching an um, uh, international holidays elective which was mm-hmm. so fun to teach. So I also don't have sources because I just gathered information from lots of different places and have kept this in my Google Drive forever. I love it. But I'm calendar challenged today. So <laughs> just take everything I say with a grain of salt. Anyway, this is real. So these tribes celebrate the winter solstice on December 22nd with a ceremony to lure back the sun god who is believed to have traveled away from the tribes during the winter. It also marks a new cycle of the wheel of the year, and it's traditionally viewed as a time for purification. And for the Hopi tribes in particular, it's a festival that lasts 16 days and includes prayers, a passing down of stories from elders, and concludes with a feast. And then at the feast, which is on December 22nd, tribal members dress up in masks and have costumes that represent the, I don't know how to say this word, kachina spirits, yep, which are believed to support their community and they perform dances and children are given dolls that represent the kachina spirits as gifts. This is a cool holiday I didn't know about. So See, thank you for there we go. teaching learning. me, Jenny. Love so it. I have another one um, that mm-hmm. happens in the same time of year. December the 23rd is Human Light. Oh, human light is a humanist holiday that was first celebrated in 2001, which seems like last year, but it was actually more than 20 years ago. Oh, stop it. Um, (laughs) And various organizations uh, recognize this holiday, including the American Humanist Association. It's a secular holiday, and it's meant to just focus on positive secular human views like reason, compassion, humanity and hope some modern celebrations have a meal with your family or your group some use candles to symbolize reason hope and compassion groups today also celebrate uh human light by doing charity work i love that yeah it's a secular human positive holiday in a time where there's a lot of faith-based holidays this is the exact opposite of festivus Festivus is also on December 23rd. It is exactly. You can leave your airing of the grievances at Festivus (laughs) and go and do some charity work in honor of human life. Or you can be appalled by what charity work you just did and and the circumstances of others and then go and complain about it at your Festivus celebration. Either one works. It's fine. I choose to do the negative one first. That's just me. Okay. My next one is not Festivus. It's Christmas. So Christmas is one that uh, is specifically tied to the Christian faith, but we have pointed out connections to other pagan traditions. And I have plenty of friends who are secular in nature and celebrate Christmas. And celebrate Christmas. Yeah, that's pretty common. So it is the historical celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. I say historical celebration, not scientific. Never mind. (laughs) Whether we're, yeah. May or may not have happened on this day. Right. Or in the spring. Uh Or mm. summertime. Right. Yeah. Okay. No matter where you are, it's more than likely that Christmas traditions are widely different. They're different in different parts of the country, let alone all over the world. So um, everyone's Christmas celebration probably looks a little bit different. Um, Americans often celebrate with a Christmas tree or visits to or from Santa and visions of snow. Okay, so my favorite is how the Australians celebrate Christmas. Yes! Because it's summer. So they go camping or go to the beach and have a barbecue. Yes. The episode of Bluey where they get in the pool. Right. I mean, come on. It's perfect. And they don't have trees. Right. They use a Christmas bush. Yes. It's so great. I love it. I love it. 
Um, in England, the Christmas traditions are really similar to those of us here in the United States, but they don't leave milk and cookies for Santa. They leave mince pies and brandy for Father Christmas. We leave bacon and coffee for Santa at our house because we know he needs some protein and a little bit of caffeine. Don't you guys also leave a cigarette for, um, what's his name? We do not leave a cigarette, but I am like kind of excited about this. Tell me more. Wait, I'm thinking of Die Hard. I thought you guys left a cigarette. We don't, but we might start. We have already <laughs> watched two diehards this season. Okay, wait. Pause. Just for a second, because I have to show you what I got my husband already for Christmas. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I bought him an advent calendar. Oh, my gosh. Is it the one with Hans Gruber falling down? We have that! Yes! <laughs> it is the Hans Gruber falling off of Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> and you count it down by... Each day. Okay. It's so Let me funny. Just brag about Hilarious. my parenting for just a minute. We have that because my daughter wanted it. <laughs> yes. That's so good. I love it. Oh it's amazing. Oh my gosh. That's um, amazing. Yeah. So I thought you guys left, um, I thought you guys left him a cigarette, but maybe you'd be better off leaving him like a, he- a headache, some sort of Advil or something. Yeah, or shoes. But you guys have dogs, so you can't leave it out. Oh yeah, shoes would be good too. <laughs> we, okay. um, we do put out reindeer food, which is made mm. of oats and glitter. Oh. The glitter reflects off the moonlight to let the reindeer know where to land and the oats gives them something to eat. Smart. We used to leave out carrots. Like a treat. Yeah. yeah. For mm-hmm. Father okay. Christmas or for St. Nicholas's donkey slash horse. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. So in Iceland, uh, Reykjavik turns into winter wonderland because when is it not? <laughs> Let's be clear. Um, with its Christmas market. It turns um, into slash is all the time. All right. <laughs> um, there's a Christmas market and there are 13 Santas <laughs> known as the Yule Lads, which is amazing. I love it. And one arrives each night in the 13 days before Christmas and leaves small gifts in shoes that are left in windowsills. Like, come on. This is adorable. adorable. And I I love it. And yes, good one. Okay, All right. next up. So um, the next holiday is Kwanzaa. And um, this was created in 1966 after the Watts riots in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. It was started by a cultural organization called Us. And it was designed to research the African first fruits harvest. Okay. Okay. So starting with first fruits, the holiday of Kwanzaa started to mature where there are different aspects of harvest celebrations, but also of African-American experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So um, the name Kwanzaa comes from a phrase in Swahili that means first fruits. Okay. And I am going to try and pronounce it, but I do not speak Swahili, nor am I familiar with the pronunciation of Swahili words. Okay. Okay. Matanda ya Kwanzaa should mean first fruits. Okay. Okay. So each family celebrates Kwanzaa in their own ways, but a lot of celebrations include song and dances, African drums, storytelling, poetry, and a great meal. This is uh, seven nights long, Mm -hmm. and every night a child lights one of the lights on the candles called the Kinara. And then one of the seven principles or values of African-American culture is discussed. Mm -hmm. And then there's a feast on December 31st. I love it. I I knew that it was a relatively recent holiday and I also knew that it was it's an African American holiday, which I, I think is really special. Um, but I, I didn't know that it meant first fruit. That's really cool. Yeah. And again, it is secular in nature. Yeah. So there are a lot of so, families that celebrate Kwanzaa and also f- celebrate a faith based holiday in the same holiday season. I love that. So it's not like I don't celebrate Christmas, I do celebrate Kwanzaa. You could do both. Right. Okay. Boxing Day. This is one that is probably on everyone's calendar, but... We don't know what it means. But we don't know what it means, yeah. So, Boxing Day is December 26th, and it's only celebrated in a few countries. And it started in the United Kingdom during the Middle Ages. So, traditionally, this is the day when the alms box, the collection boxes for the poor, 
like alms for the poor, mm-hmm. right? Um, are sorry, I was that came from um, Best in Show. Yes, when he's like, what Shih Tzu is walking around going, oh, oh alms, alms for, for the, the poor. poor. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I love that movie so much; it's perfect. Anyway, so the alms boxes were kept in churches and then opened up and all of the money inside or whatever it was put inside was distributed out to the people who needed it the most. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, this still happens in some places, which I think is great. Um, a lot of people have heard of the other origin of the holiday, which is when, uh, servants were traditionally given the day off to celebrate Christmas with their families, whether or not they were given a box of items by their, you know, employers we have no employers slave owners whatever you want to call them who knows but um that's not necessarily true it's just that they were supposed to be given the day off so um it's now a public holiday in the uk in canada australia and new zealand and other countries um and i will tell you that it shuts down over <laughs> over there. It shuts down. Like people are not doing things that day. Um, there are soccer matches and horse races and things that take place on Boxing Day. The Irish refer to the holiday as St. Stephen's Day, and they have their own tradition called hunting the wren, in which boys take a fake wren and attach it to a pole and then parade it through town. <laughs> I can't tell you what that means I or don't what it is. I don't know what the history of that is, but it sounds like something fun to investigate. Right. And it just, yeah, I think that's really cool. And this is also a really fun one. In the Bahamas, the Bahamians celebrate Boxing Day with a street parade and a festival called Junkanoo, which I'm pretty sure I said wrong, but I hope it's pronounced that way because it's really fun that to say. That is fun. <laughs> All right. Um, Next on December 31st is Omisoka. And this is New Year's Eve. And it is the second most important day in the Japanese tradition. Oh. It's the final day of the old year and the eve of New Year's Day, which is the most important day in the Japanese tradition. I love it. Families gather on Omisoka uh, for one last time in the old year. And they have a bowl of noodles. Okay. Um, either soba or udon noodles and the idea is long noodle long life long noodles to cross from one year to another i love it um so at midnight uh, a lot of people like to visit shrines or temples um they uh at the temple a lot of times you can get this uh amazake which is a rice drink and um Mm. buddhist temples ring bells um and they ring one time for each of the 108 earthly desires that could cause human suffering. Wow. That's um uh, that's a, a really it, it seems very honoring and very like sobering. Yeah, to close you know out mean? the old year so that next year yeah. long new to long life. Yeah. I that's really interesting. Um I am thinking about right now of Hogmanay, uh, which is in Scotland. Um, and it's about like Vikings and they like New Year's Eve is a huge celebration in Scotland Mm. and you can like walk to the castle in Edinburgh. It's, it's a cool one, but, um, that's, that's not the one that I'm talking about next. (laughs) That's just where my brain went. So I'm going to talk about the next one, New Year's Day. Okay. So New Year's Day is celebrated by cultures all around the world because we're celebrating the change of the calendar to the new year, right? Mm -hmm. In Spain, you eat 12 grapes, one for each stroke of the clock at midnight on New Year's Eve, and each grape represents good luck for one month of the coming year. Um, In Colombia, people will carry empty suitcases around the block in the hopes of a travel-filled new year, which is pretty cool. Um, In the Philippines, you will find round shapes all over the place on New Year's Eve as representative of coins to symbolize prosperity in the coming year. And uh, many families will also have piles of fruit on their dining tables. And some eat exactly 12 round fruits, like grapes. I don't know how you're going to eat 12 oranges (laughs) at midnight, but Unless you're Joey Chestnut. Ew. That's so much acid in your stomach. I feel like you'd get sick. And he doesn't, does, not the point. Um, and a lot of them will, will bleh, uh, and a lot of them will wear polka dots because they're round. I love and it. it's for good luck. What do you do so for New Year's? Cute. 
typically uh i stay in my bed <laughs> yeah i i don't really do like a big thing because um my husband like doesn't he's not really like a oh new year's let's go celebrate it's not like a big thing yeah I do like to, I used to watch the ball drop and, and all that. Um, I will say I've been in New York on New Year's Eve and it is Nuts. a complete mess. Yeah. It's, it's like deserted in some places right. that are, you know, because but like completely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause everyone's in one spot. So, um, it's, it's just wild, but I, I've become a very like, just kind of take it easy on New Year's and just hope for the coming year. We do eat black eyed peas. Oh, you do? So, like that is, that's a, yeah. And I don't really like them. I don't either. But I'll have like a mouthful. Okay. And that's it. Um, we drank Sauvignon Blanc because we went to New Zealand over New Year's oh, many years ago. I love that. How fun. And visited the wine country. Mm-hmm. And during our tour, our tour guide told us that his favorite trilogy of all time is, wait for it, The Mighty Ducks. Yes. So we watch The Mighty Ducks every year on New Year's Eve. I love it. <laughs> that's so fun. We have stuff like that that we watch every year for other holidays, but we don't do one for New Year's Eve. I can't imagine that there's a lot of families out there that have a New Year's Eve movie tradition that is something other than like When Harry Met Sally, like a New Year's Eve movie. Oh, yeah. It's definitely not the Mighty Ducks. Okay. Yeah, no. So moving on, uh, on January 6th is uh, Three Kings Day or Epiphany. This is the holiday that is 12 days of Christmas. It took 12 days for... The wise men, the three kings, Mm -hmm. uh, following the star, it took them until January 6th to arrive and meet the baby Jesus and give him gifts. Mm -hmm. So Epiphany is, uh, or Three Kings Day, um, this is when children actually get their Christmas presents. It makes sense. Like if they're there to give presents to the baby, like it makes sense to give your presents. Yeah. I love that. Okay. In France and in cultures that have been occupied by France... (laughs) Yes. Um, A king cake is baked and, you know, you'll hide a coin, a jewel or a tiny baby inside. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The Mexican king cake is Rosca de Reyes, um, but it is to represent that the Holy Family had to hide from King Herod. Right. You're hiding a baby. Baby. That's the whole point. Yeah. Oh, that's really, really interesting. Okay. Okay. One more. One more, and I'm probably going to say it wrong, I think, but is it Lori? I think that's how you say it, Lori. Lori. L-O-H-R-I, Lori. And this is on January 13th. So this is currently about bonfire, fancy food, food baskets, dancing. It's all about paying gratitude to the Almighty and dancing to the beats of the dole, which is the drum. And you enjoy a large tasty treat feast yes it's a festival that belongs to the region of punjab and mostly celebrated in the northern part of india on this day um foods like till which are black sesame seeds peanuts and popcorn are fed to the fire as part of the harvest ritual and it's believed that offering these food items to the god of fire on this day helps take away all the negativity from life and brings in prosperity oh I love it. Here, the bonfire symbolizes the fire god. And then after you offer the food to the almighty people, seek blessings and prosperity and happiness um, in return for all of the th- things that they've offered to the god. So love it. cool. So again, when someone offers you happy holidays as a greeting, it's because there are so many during this time. Totally. And yes. you may be someone who celebrates many of them or none. Right. But you can always respond in kind. I love it. All right, let's take a break. You should. Okay. All right. Y'all know CK and GK love to support fellow indie podcasts. So here's another show you might really love. Hi, friends. I'm Katie. And I'm Olivia. Check out Podcast by Proxy for all things Canadian true crime. They went back to follow up with him. Okay. He was lawyered up. That's interesting. Yeah. I think he caught a whiff of the energy at the first questioning. You can listen to Podcast by Proxy on 604podnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening to our friends. Back to the show. Okay, we're back. Yes. It's time to celebrate what we are (laughs) obsessed with. And I will go first. Way to go. Good connection. Okay. In true ADHD fashion, there is this idea of follow the dopamine. 
right? Yes. Whatever 100%. your little fixation is, do it in a way that doesn't hurt anyone or get in the way of the rest of your life. Absolutely. But if it makes you feel good, keep going. But also in the ADHD world, sometimes you feel the need to tell everyone about it all the time. <laughs> Yeah. So just be aware if you've talked about it more than once or twice, you're probably getting on the non ADHD people's nerves. Yes. Just put it out there. Okay. Um, my obsession right now is videos on YouTube about the food on Disney cruises. Stop yeah. it. <laughs> this is one of those ones you want to keep to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obsessed. And it's not just videos about cruises or videos about Disney cruises. Well, it's thank specifically goodness. the food. On Disney cruises. I know the names of all the restaurants on all the ships. This is a problem. This is not. <laughs> this is not normal. No, no. But I am loving it right now. I am loving it. And, you know, a week from now, I'll be over it. But I yes, can't stop will. watching them. Okay, so this is why you and I are friends. Because I also have an ADHD obsession <laughs> This is not why we are friends, but this is something that we can connect over. Yeah. Because mine right now is twinkle fairy lights all over my house <laughs> because it's Christmas time and they have to be everywhere. And because I'm a psycho who like doesn't want to have to go in and like flip the switch all the time, all of them have a remote. <laughs> <laughs> She's showing the remote. <laughs> because it's sitting on my desk. Because that way I can turn off and on the little lights that are next to my desk. Love it. But so like, what? so what I did was I took... Um, like vases that I have around the house and I filled them with kind of like they're like glittery ornaments but they're like not expensive right, they're right. just like plastic right and then I put the twinkle the little fairy lights inside the vase with the ornaments and I put those around my house oh, and it looks cute and it feels so but then I have a remote to turn them on and off and it's Christmassy so that's my obsession right that's now amazing. and I've gone through so many batteries so no. I think last year I had an obsession with my gingerbread Christmas house so it's totally fine yeah and last our last house year's looks like gingerbread christmas house again i love right. the white lights around the edge of the eaves it's just my favorite. last year mine was the um the home alone lego house oh yes that's right this year the other one is my um peanuts uh christmas puzzle <laughs> <laughs> that's it okay what's your gem okay <laughs> this is not of this week it is a gem of another week but it deserves to be said on the air <laughs> um my family got together for thanksgiving and um, it's the first time that all of us have really been together in a while. Um, my brother and his wife just had a new baby. My sister and her husband just had a new baby. So it, there's just there's a lot of joy and excitement, but also like a lot of craziness that helps. It makes it hard for us to all get together at the same time. Sure. But we're all there together and we are talking about toys and how yes. different our lives are now than they were just a few years ago when we did not have children. Yeah. And my brother says, do you know what I learned this week? Kinetic uh -oh. sand is not magnetic sand. <laughs> <laughs> the things you don't know when you don't have kids. He was like, so I saw funny. it stick together. I just thought it was magnets. <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh, you sweet thing. It's like, no, yep. it's not. Welcome to parenthood. <laughs> not to mention, you're on your second kid. You should know what kids yeah, You should be. have known better. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, man. Well, my gem is also from a different week. She's trying to live in the future, guys. She's really working hard at it. I, I'm Calendar is hard. Okay, so here's what happened. You know, I go for my early morning walks and I see all kinds of random stuff and including like it's, doll's I, heads rolling across the street, doll heads Halloween. rolling across the street. And that I picked up it because I don't know what I thought it was, but whatever. I'm stupid. Um, so this particular time I'm out, there's, it's a lot of, I have deer in my neighborhood, but they're out more than normal right now because it's mating, it's rutting season. Mm. So that you have babies in the spring, it, it's rutting season right now. And the usually I'll see lots of does out and young deer, but it, because it's rutting season, the bucks are out too. Yes. And as we know, the bucks are the ones that have antlers. And what hilariously happened or cracked me up the other day and then also like made me feel bad for laughing until I checked to make sure everything was fine was um, one of the bucks... 
must have gotten caught like in a in a ghost hanging from a tree or something (laughs) (laughs) because I just like hear all of a sudden this like galloping noise and then like it it looked like the headless horseman. I was like, what is happening? Right? But I knew it was a deer because it smelled like there's a smell that the sure. bucks have during running season. And I was like, okay, so there's a deer. I know it's not the headless horseman, so I'm probably fine. But also it's like a that's like a goat like a sheet on that thing's head. And then it like st- it, it I think I spooked it and so it ran across the street and then as it kind of settles down I don't know how long it had been stuck on this deer's head, but I, I kind of watched and I was like, if it's not okay, I'm sure it'll come off and I really can't be the person who goes oh, over. Yeah, no, no, but no, no, like, no. I, you, yeah, you don't want to do that. Um, but also like, it's got to come off at some point, right? And it, it starts like rubbing on a tree and I, it started to like halfway come off. So I knew we were getting, we were getting to the good stuff and it was going to be all right after that. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm like, how long has this ghost been on this deer's head? It's November. Like, it's, <laughs> like we're, we were a ride around Thanksgiving. Like how this poor baby, Let's, like what either they left their yes. Halloween decorations out for a long time or this poor thing had it on its head for, I'm choosing to believe the form. Yes. Let, let us like, believe that someone just down. hadn't taken down Halloween yet. Right. I would, <laughs> when, I was, when I really was like, is the headless horseman, that's what it looks like. It's like, it, it was a very, spooky but like like I knew that it wasn't that's what that was so I'm like kind of telling myself like you know that's not what that is but what the heck is what happening is that, though? right but it was a it was a deer caught in a ghost yeah. that's all <laughs> no big deal <laughs> totally normal ghost deer right right all right well if you haven't done so recently feel free to engage with one of our posts as you learned last week um anytime you comment on something the algorithm likes it and shows it yep. to more people Yep. Um, so feel free to do so. Uh, mm-hmm. Hit those five stars and tell all your friends. It could be your Christmas or Omasaki or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Yule gift to us. Mm-hmm. And of course, make a choices. And like leave some cigarettes and shoes out for John McClain. <laughs> okay, Bye. bye. <laughs>